Rupert, let's touch on, you said earlier, epigenetics. I think this is very important. I think it's also very important to see where we can go beyond epigenetics with morphic resonance. So in terms of science and understanding epigenetics, this was a profound advancement. Actually, Rosalind Franklin, um, Francis Crick, James Watson, I think that um, since 1951, two, three, I think that since then, it's only been about 70 years. And we've had now a profound um, transition into what is now going to be the biotechnology age um, in this next decade and, and beyond, where we'll have things like a constant stream of our body's biometrics, and we'll be able to make tweaks like like jets that have hundreds of sensors on them. And we'll be able to also increase our longevity and retain youthful homeostatic capacity. And that's all to the thanks of understanding this code of life and also to how to augment it. And uh, so this is very profound. And and I, I want to explain briefly that the idea of epigenetics that these newly acquired behaviors leave things like DNA methylation and affect histone tails and that's passed down to, to future generations and that's not just behaviors but that's also things like the tra tra traumatic instances as well and if you do things like heal what has been a trauma in your lineage it you can actually butterfly effect that downward and outward. Uh, and I think that's, that's very profoundly important. Cells also have very interesting processes like this with their cell cycles and their checkpoints and where they also have, if they have a certain amount of protein that's built up, that it may be indicating that it was harder to have mitosis happen. So there is a memory mechanism, even at the cellular level. And you were mentioning this earlier as well, that a lot of what the, the, was a very profound enrichment that happened from Carl Jung's work with the collective unconscious and archetypes and dating back to what we were talking about with Plato and Aristotle and their mentality around this. This is, this is extreme. This has been now triangulated on from so many different angles in terms of what is truly underlying in a maybe a sort of implicate as like a David Bohm would say or a, some sort of a source code or or an or a, an animistic essence of sorts and and what what is that Rupert that is beyond epigenetics well epigenetics as is currently understood epigenetic inheritance is um, the way in which genes can be switched on or switched off by methylation or changes in histones or whatever. Um, it's conceived of in uh, molecular terms. That's one reason it's the taboo against the inheritance of acquired characters was lifted around the year 2000. In, in the 20th century, it was one of the most taboo topics in biology. You could lose your job and you suffer serious career damage if you said you believed in the inheritance of quiet characters. Now it's okay. Um, <laughs> it's a major shift. Um, so um, that's a, a welcome change. Uh, but it, things can go further, you see. Now let's take an example. Um, if you train rats to learn a new trick, um, this is one of the experiments for morphic resonance. Yes. Um, it's, this experiment's actually been done. It was started at Harvard decades ago. Um, you train them to learn a new trick. And it turns out that their children learn it quicker and their children even quicker. And it went on over 30 generations, them getting quicker and quicker. Um, and this was interpreted as the inheritance of acquired characters because it was from the parents to the children. And this became um, very controversial research because of the taboo against inheritance of acquired characters. Then someone did a control experiment. They tested rats uh, that had, whose parents had never been trained in this trick. And they found they were getting better too. They were all getting better. Uh, so it wasn't just something passed on through the genes or modification of the genes. 
uh, there was something else going on. And that's, I think, where morphic resonance comes in. Mm -hmm. So I think in inheritance, we've got several different aspects to inheritance. We've got DNA, which explains the structure of proteins, uh, and some of it's concerned with switching on and off other genes. We've got epigenetic inheritance that can silence or uh, activate genes, and that can be passed on uh, uh, in some cases. We've also got morphic resonance. And then, of course, we've got cultural inheritance, and that too can involve morphic resonance. When a baby learns a new langu a language, for example, I think that it's not just a stimulus response psychological process. I think that that learning is accelerated by morphic resonance. So um, it underlies cultural inheritance as well. Now, would it be fair then to say that it, it is potentially both, like you just indicated, there is a, a tremendous amount of the, the current scientific paradigm that is, that like you just described, unlocked the, the next level of understanding genetics and epigenetics. And so we have this general understanding now and the way that that process is part of this, this, uh, the, the, in the inheritance of, of memory. And then we have something else that, that is at play, which you've cited the example with learning with rats, but there's also many other, you, you give, you give so many other examples um, with, with dogs knowing when their owners come home with, um, with nursing mothers and that they're, they're them being able to feel when they have their, uh, the, the, the breast milk and their babies and the need to feed you, you, there's, there's many of these sorts of examples. This kind of is also a little bit leading us into um, the, the science and dogma section a little bit, but I, I want to, I wanted to just ask, especially on, I want to know if there's both, if both these both coexist, you kind of gave the indication that you have on, on a, on a body level, you have the genetics and epigenetics and the further understandings of science and then there's also some sort of a, an implicate or an ethereal or a, a spirit or soul or animistic source code-esque um, contribution. And those two things can coexist. 